kind of got a little funny thing about this message tonight. I don't know, Shane, if you've ever done this. But there are certain books in the Bible that are hard to preach from. And I started praying about a month ago. I said, God, give me a message out of the book of Leviticus. That's a hard book to preach. Sunday, Saturday morning before I got ready to come in to breakfast, I sat in there watching some videos and this deal come up on a deal out of Leviticus. I'm like, name's out of the wrong book. And I said, I'm going to see what the real book says. God give me a message. But it's kind of strange sometimes because if I'm going to be a preacher, I want to preach from Genesis to Revelation. I think every book in the Bible needs to be preached from. Amen. There's something in every book. Tonight, I'm going to preach on maintaining a lamp. And I'm going to start in Leviticus chapter 24, and we're going to go from there over to Matthew 25 before I get done. And then... Leviticus chapter 24 at the first verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of, of Israel that they may bring unto thee pure oil, olive beaten from the light, for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually without veil or of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statue forever ever in your generations. He shall order the lamps, the pure candlesticks before the Lord continually. Let's go over here to Matthew 25, and I'm going to read three verses out of it. I'm going to start with verse 6. And at the midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us, and you but go ye rather to them that sell it and buy it for yourself. You may be seated. I got to thinking about over in the book of Leviticus, where Moses told God, he said, go out there and have them get the oil It was beaten of olives, the pure oil. I tell you what, tonight as we go through our Christian life and our lamps have been burning, I don't know how many of you have ever been around an old coal oil lamp. But I tell you what, on an old coal oil lamp, the longer it burns, the dimmer it gets. Sometimes you got to go up to that old lamp and put it out, take a pair of scissors, and you cut that wick off, and you trim that wick up, and you'll trim the edges up at about a 45 just to barely end. And when you light that old lamp, it'll light up bright and shiny and put off a bright light. Well, what happens if you're not careful? You raise it up too high, and then you get a lot of soot, and you get a lot of smoke in your lamp. There's a fine deal. You got to get in there and you got to get that old lamp set just right. We had no hunting cabin for years that we went to. We had no power. We used coal lights in that old cabin. But I got to thinking tonight of how we are as Christians today a light to the world. Sometimes we need to get down to an altar and trim our, our wicks back up. Sometimes if we're not careful when we go out in the world we're not putting off the bright light we need to put off. Amen. Some things we do in our life, if we're not careful, the steps we take can cause us to stumble and fall because our light's not where it needs to be. I got to thinking about a story as I was sitting there at my table. 
this good friend of ours up there at Kingsway, he told me, he said, I went down to Seymour to the car lot, and he said, I went down there to take a friend of you who would just been saved. He said, I went down there and I took my friend down there and I wanted him to meet this great man of God. And he is a great man of God. But happened to be that day when he showed up, that guy told an off-color joke. And he's like, oh my, what's happened? What happened, even in a great man of God, if you're not careful, you'll stumble and fall and you'll do something that you shouldn't do. Sometimes you've got to get back in the will of God and you've got to get back. And this man is probably one of the greatest preachers I have ever heard in my life. I'll tell you what, he, I grew up under his preaching and the man of God, and it wasn't a bad joke, but it's sometimes the way things come off, if we're not careful when we're out in the community and we're representing Jesus Christ, if we're not careful, we will say things to hinder our walk and hinder our church. And sometimes we got to get back. I mean, this is one of the messages. we got to think about our light tonight. And the light we put off as a church, we got to get back into trimming our deal up. The virgins were sitting there at the midnight hour, and they knew that Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, was coming. And I tell you what, tonight they had got their lamps all trimmed and ready to go for the time when Jesus calls. I tell you what, each and every one of us need to keep our lamps trimmed and ready and ready for something that's because the bridegroom cometh tonight. We don't know the hour when Jesus is coming by. <laughs> Said they were sitting there at the midnight hour and they were preparing for Jesus to come back. I tell you what, this morning the message that Shane preached about being there at the great throne of judgment when he got to talking about you're going to see people come up out of hell and they're going to look at you and they're going to say, Why didn't you tell me? I'm going to be guilty of that. Sometimes i got to get back in and say, I need to trim my lamp. I need to get my lamp back where I need it to be. I need to maintain my life. And sometimes i got to watch the things I say and things I do. And this message is for Gary as much as anybody. Because when I tell you what, when I go out there to work, and, you know, I used to have a joke with them guys. I'd always tell them a little story or tell them something. I'm like, Kind of like old Cy off Duck Dynasty. It started up at the tr as the truth, but where we end up, we don't know. And sometimes, if we're in our Christian walk, if we're not careful, we get a little off track, you know, we're letting our light shine. And sometimes we need to go back to God and say, God, help me trim my land. Trim up what I'm doing. Trim me up and clean me up and convict me of what I'm doing wrong. It may be listening to the wrong type of music when you're going down the road in your car. Sometimes that hits home. Sometimes you've got to think, well, a little bit of country or western music or a little rock and roll, it ain't going to hurt me. But I had a Randy uh, Ledbetter preach the revival up there at Kingsway years ago. And Randy Led Ledbetter is Danny's cousin, I believe. And he was a member of a, a heavy metal band, a famous heavy metal band. And he said when he was in that, he said when they would roll him out on to do the concerts, they would put him in the coffin and roll him out on that concert stage. He had a big old mohawk, he said it was a foot tall off the top of his head. And when he would get in that coffin and they would roll him out on the stage while he was in that coffin, he said every time that they rolled him out on that stage, he's like, my dad and mom did not read me this way. That's where his mom and daddy's light was shining in his life. And one night he gave his heart and life back to Jesus and he got his life back on orders and he ended up being a great preacher. But he had to get his lamp retrimmed and get back where he needed to be. And sometimes we got to get back in our walk and say, God, is there something in my walk tonight that's hindering my life? Sometimes I have to do that. Each and every one of us need to ask ourselves on a, probably on a daily basis, is my lamp where it needs to be? Amen. Is the light that's coming off my light what it needs to be? Is it as bright as it needs to be? Or have I burnt some bridges or have I burnt some things up in my life that don't make my 
thing is light, or my light is bright as it once was. You know what taught these little kids? We teach them that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. No, I'm not going to put it under a bushel basket, no. I'm going to let it shine. Sometimes we got to get back to that simplicity and say, God, I want my light to shine tonight. I want it to shine in a bright and shining way. I tell you what, tonight we need to get out and shine in the community and shine to the people around us. And sometimes we got to watch what we say and what we do. Because what we don't understand when we're out in the community and out in the world, the world looks at us different. There's like, them people up there, them King James only crazy people. We have a higher standard we have to hold ourselves to. And sometimes we got to be willing to trim our lamp up and say, I need to watch what I say and what jokes I tell and what I say. Because if you're not careful, you say things out in public and then they're like, well, that don't sound too Christian. Yep. And if you're not careful, you hurt your own testimony. Yep. Right. And sometimes you got to get back in and say, God, I need my, my lamp trimmed back up. I need to be cleaned back up. Amen. Sometimes i got to get back in and say, God, I need, I need a little bit of help with this. Yep. And sometimes it don't hurt for us to pray, God. <coughs> what I'm doing wrong, would you convict me of what I'm doing wrong? Sometimes we got to pray for conviction on ourselves. Yep. Sometimes we go through life and we don't realize we get so numb to what's going on in the world. You know, I preached a message one time up at Kingsway. I never will forget it. And it talked. I talked about when Jesus took and he put the mud and the spittle in the man's eye and told him to go down to the Jordan River and wash it out. And I told them, I said, that mud that they put in that, when Jesus put that mud in his eyes, that represented the world and the blindness from the world. I tell you what, tonight a lot of Christians have put on too much world in their mind and in their eye, and they start to go blind. Amen. And if you're not careful, you start watching things on TV, watching things on your phone, that will affect your light and your life. Yep. And I tell you what, sometimes we got to go back down to the river and wash that stuff back out and get rid of the stuff that's getting in our eyes that are starting to blind us tonight as Christians. I tell you what, if you want to keep on going on and growing as a Christian, sometimes you got to do a little lamp maintenance and get in there and get things cleaned out. you got to go back to God and say, God, if there's something I'm doing wrong, convict me of it and show me how to get this out of my eyes and get, it, get my sight back and where I have a bright enough light to show the world of what I need to show them tonight. Amen. Sometimes if we're not careful, we start slipping away because we let the world get in our eyes. Yeah. I tell you what, we start doing one little thing, and the next thing is two little things, yeah. three little things. The next thing you know, the devil's got a hold of it. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we need to go back in there and say, God, I need my lamp trimmed. Yeah. I tell you what, I, sometimes I need to get back in that old book and get cut a little bit. Yeah. I have to do it. Yeah. Because sometimes Gary gets in the way. I tonight don't want to be in the way. I want my light to shine brighter and brighter every day. You know, as me and Kathy was talking earlier tonight, we need to be able to get out in other churches in the community and be able to talk and bring the King James Bible back into some of these churches. You know, we got to be able to get out and witness to the people, show them the importance of why we believe what we believe. We cannot be afraid, you know, we cannot die down to one church. We need people to get back in some of these churches and start bringing back the old King James book and be willing to get up and trim some lights to some churches. Yeah. Tonight, some of the churches in this world have grown dim. i tell you what, I was talking to Brother J.W. and he was telling me how many churches was closing in the association down there around Lebanon and stuff. They had lost a third of their churches in the last two years. And it's because we don't have preachers and people that are willing to stand up and shed a light of the old King James Bible Amen. and are not willing to stand up and say, I need my lamp, lamp trimmed once in a while that I can get out and I can shed a light upon a world that's lost and dying and going to a devil's hell. Yeah. I don't know about you, but Brother Shane's message affected me this morning. Amen. Tell you what, the more I got to thinking about having to stand up there and I... I got to thinking about a time when I was working with a man. His name was Ron. He was a severe alcoholic. And he was a Catholic. And he asked me one day, and this was when neither one of us was living right. 
He said, are we going to make it to heaven? I said, right away, we're both going. We're both going to hell. And that man, as far as I know, died and went to hell. And when, if I have to watch that man come up out of the depths of hell, Ron looking at me and saying, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? That's where my light wasn't shining where it needed to be. My lamp wasn't trimmed up where it needed to be. I got to thinking about different ones in my life that I should have witnessed to and should have went and talked to. I tell you what, let my life shine because I didn't have my lamp trimmed up where I needed to be. I didn't have things where I want, where I should be. I tell you what, the next thing I, I, I've done in my life, I've noticed, I'll get up on a high on, on my Christian wall, and then if we're not careful, we'll go down in a valley and we start falling away. But I tell you what, when we start going down in that valley, we start falling away. We need to get down there. We need to trim that light that lamp that back up and get some things cleaned back up in our life. Yeah, I tell you what, tonight we need men and women of God that realize that we're just a worthless piece of flesh. And without Jesus Christ as a light in our life, we're worth nothing. Amen. But I tell you what, tonight we need men and women of God that are willing to come down to an old altar and say, God, it's time to get me cleaned back up a little bit. Help me trim my lamp, lamp up. Help me put a shining a brighter light out into the world today. I tell you what, tonight we're going to have to get serious and say, God, trim me up, clean me up. Make me the, God, the man of God or the woman of God I need to be. And I tell you what, we need to pray for a little conviction. Is that God convict me when I'm doing wrong? I tell you what, when I when people come back and they'll change my radio and put on that old worldly music, and as soon as it comes on, God starts convicting me. That I tell you what, right there, and I walk right over and I turn it back off because that ain't what I want to listen to. Amen. I tell you what, tonight we need men and women of God that are willing to stand up and say, I'm going to shine my light to die out there dead and dying world in the dark. We're in the midnight hour right now in this old world. I don't, I'll tell you what, tonight at any time, Jesus can break that eastern sky open. And if we do we have the light we need to have in our life, tonight we need to make sure we're carrying the light we need to carry. We need to make sure everything's in order. I'll tell you what, sometimes as Christians, we need to get our hearts and lives and our houses in order. Because I tell you what, the bridegroom coming. I tell you what, tonight, Oh God, and told Moses, he said, you go in there and you light that, that, that old temple up, and you light it up continually. I tell you what, tonight we need a continual light shining in this old world. Amen. And I tell you what, it needs to be some old King James preaching Bible believing Baptist. Amen. I tell you what, tonight we need men and women of God that are not afraid to stand up and say, I want to shine for you. And yeah. if there's something in my life, Lord, convict me of it. So I can get it out and I can get my lamp trimmed back up. Yep. I don't want to be doing something that's going to hinder my walk or hinder somebody young in the face walk. Lord, help me be what I need to be. Help me be the man of God I need to be. Help me be the woman of God I need to be. I'll tell you what tonight, we need to pray to God that we be the father and mother we need to be. Yep. That we can raise our children. i tell you what, this morning I spent a little time with... Elijah, me and him was sitting there at the kitchen table and everybody was asleep in the house. And the next thing I know, here comes little old Elijah. He goes, Mary, did you know your baby? I have a three-year-old child. Amen. That's a special life. Yeah. I was sitting there almost in tears thinking my little grandson is asking, Mary, did you know? I tell you what, tonight it's amazing when you put a light in your house of what you're affecting your children tonight. Amen. And I tell you what, mothers and fathers, what you do, I tell you what, sometimes when we get angry, we say things we shouldn't say, we do things we shouldn't do. But when you do that in your house, you look over and you look at your children next to you, everything you do affects them. Yep. Everything you do, that life you're putting out, affects that child. That's right. Are we going to be perfect? No. There's only one perfect. Amen. I tell you what we can do when we fail and we fall short. It doesn't hurt to go down and open to God. I'm sorry. Amen. God, I'm sorry for my failure. And I tell you another thing we can do. We say, God, help me with my failures. Because we're saved by grace. And God's grace is sufficient tonight. God's grace is sufficient for you to help you shine your light into a community. I tell you what, teenagers, when you're in, ch in school and you're going around to your friends, you're a light for God. What you do and what you say 
the effects of kids around you. You put out a light in your schools and in your community that you'll never understand. Somebody around you tonight, young men and women, are looking at you in the example you're setting. It may be a neighbor kid. It may be a friend. But they're looking to you and saying, and you're a light in their life tonight. Each and every kid in here needs to start praying to God, help me be the light I need to be to my friends. Help me be the man that I need to be or the young woman I need to be because I'm just trying to set an example. Because you're the next generation to take over. If Jesus don't come back, you know, I know some men of God thought they would be back before they died. They have died and went on to heaven. If I'm here for the rapture, I go out in the grave. It don't matter. Amen. Because I know where I'm going. Amen. But we got to keep working. we got to keep shedding the light on this whole world. And it starts with the kids, the adults, the parents. All of us have to get our lamps in order. We have to do a little lamp maintenance once in a while. And go in there and trim things up and clean things up. And I like... Today, Katie told me something that Charlie had sent his sister that just got married. And the way he had worded it, he had worded it in love. Sometimes you can get them with love, but you'll never get them for by beating them down. Sometimes you got to be a light. You can't beat them down. you got to try to lift them up and show them something better. You go in there and you say hateful words to them and you try to tear down what they think. You got to get them with love, because Jesus was love. Yeah, He don't. He expects you to tell them what's right and what's wrong. But sometimes you got to approach them with love. I tell you what, you get them into the church, God will clean them up. We got to get them here first. Sometimes we got to approach it with love and say, "I love you enough. I'd like you to come to church." We had this. We got a friend across the street. And it's on again, off again, kind of friendship. She wants to go off on her other lifestyle. But I guess she laid over for two or three days, real bad sick. And she's sitting there tonight at her house right before we come to church. And she said, you know me, I'll never go to a Baptist church. And I just thought under my breath, I'm like, you don't know but you're going. God's not working on you, I can see you. Doing. And I tell you what, tonight, though, we had at times want to give up on this this woman. But I know there's hope. Because there's God. But I tell you what we've got to do. We've got to love those that are unlovable. We've got to show the ones that are unlovable in the community that there's a love in this deal. We've got to be alive. We've got to have our lights and our lamps trimmed up and ready to shine for people. I tell you what, tonight we've got to get serious about showing a light and a love to this community. Yeah. We cannot look down on them or look inside them because they don't look like we do or they don't live the lifestyle they need to live. Amen. We need to be willing to go to them and bring them in in love. I tell you what, we get them inside the doors, God will take care of the bad stuff. God will take care of the things that they're falling in. <coughs> but we got to get them here first. We got to approach them and tell them we love them and we care about them and we don't want them to die and go to the devil's hell. And we got to be a light unto them. Amen. Because they're sitting out here in the dark world, maybe strung out on methamphetamines, drugs of all kinds, pornography, everything that's going wrong in this old world. You may be the only light in that person's life. That's right. And tonight you need to pray and say, God, let me get my lamp turned up where it needs to be and let it get it cleaned up where I need it cleaned up. And Lord, if I do something that might offend somebody or I say something that might be a little inappropriate, Lord, Convict me of it. I've had to do it. Amen. I've had to pray to God and say, God, I, I don't want to be a stumbling stone. Lord, let me be a light for you. And I tell you what, tonight, each and every one of us need to get serious in our Christian walk and say, God, am I going to be a light or am I going to be a stumbling block? So tonight, if you really think you are have things in your life that may be a stumbling block for the, your family and friends around you, Maybe it's time to come down to this old altar to God. I need to get these stumbling blocks out of the way out of my life. And get the things out of my life that's not making me to be the light I need to be. Because I tell you what, 
you start getting the stumbling blocks out of your life and say, God, get that out of my way. You know, there were five foolish virgins in that story in Matthew. And they wasn't ready, and they didn't have their lamps prepared, and they wasn't ready to go. But I tell you what, tonight, we need our lamps ready to go. We don't want to be like the five foolish and not make it. Because they wasn't prepared. They didn't go out and get the oil. And I, the oil, to me, represents the blood of Jesus Christ. You stop and look at that, that old oil. I believe even back when Moses, when God told Moses to put that pure oil, the, the pure olive oil, in those lamps, that's a representative of Jesus Christ's blood. That's the light of the world. I tell you what Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross, is what lit the world. And I tell you what, back there, even going into the temple, when he said we need to go in there, and he said Moses go in there and light the temple. Use that olive oil, the pure stuff. I tell you what, tonight we need to use the pure word of God. Amen. We need to use the pure word of God. Tell them about Jesus and say, I want to light the world tonight. I want to bring people in to, to, to this world. And if there's something in your life that you're struggling with, you come down here to an altar, every one of us struggles in this church. Every one of us is going to have faults. But I tell you what, tonight, if you come down to the altar and say, God, if there's something in my life that's holding me down, and helping me not be as bright a light as I need to be. God help take it out of my life. Help get my can my lamp trimmed up and let my light shine bright. And tonight we need to get our lamps ready. Because I tell you what, we don't know the hour. And I'd say every each and every one of us have the lost loved one in our life tonight. That we don't want to see go to hell. Amen. There's not nobody in here. I've got family members that I don't even speak to. I got a father-in-law over here I spoke to twice in 12 years. I don't want him to go to hell. Me and him may not get along here on this earth. He may hate me with every every bit of passion he has in his body. But I would give anything to know that he got saved and went to hell. We had a good friend named Jim Bybee over here, follower. He was a missionary Baptist preacher. He was one of the great men of God in my life. And my father law said, don't ever let that man preach my funeral. Because that man pre preached conviction down on my father. I tell you what, I don't want to be there and see my father law come up out of the gates of hell smelling like sulfur or something I did. I pray all the time. I say, God, soften my father's heart. Soften his heart. God, all I want to do is see the man saved. I tell you what, each and every one of us tonight need to be alive. I drive by his house every time I come to this church. And I hope and pray that he sees me driving by there knowing I'm going to church. Because when me and Kathy first, when Kathy first got saved, he got mad at me and Kathy because Kathy was the one to go to church all the time. And he tried to tell us it was a man-made book. And I'm here tonight to tell you that each and every one of us around here is a light to somebody in this community. Somebody out there needs us to be the light we need to be. So tonight we need to trim our lamps up and get ready for this. We need to light up the temple tonight. You know, when Moses... Went and told Aaron, he said, you get it ready. And he said, we're going to light this temple. And he told him how we're going to do it. I'll tell you what, tonight, when we get to thinking about it, we need to start praying to God and say, God, help me trim my, my lamp up to where I need to be. You know, I want to see more souls saved. I want to see more move. I, see more, I want to see more of a move of God. I know we're in the end, we're in the end and we're in a great falling away. But I tell you what, I don't want, want to lose my hunger to see souls saved. I believe each and every one of us can bring somebody in to get, so they can get saved. We well, just can't give up. We got to keep going out there witnessing. We got to go out there and keep shining the light to God. Give me the words to say. 
Don't let it be for me. Don't let it be for what I think they need to hear. God, be the light through me and use my tongue and talk through me. Don't let it be of me. Let it be of you. And I tell you what, tonight, if we get our, can our lamps set, we get them all trimmed up, we get everything cleaned up. You know, when I was talking about that lamp and you turn that old coal lamp up and it turns that old glow black, and it gets all dark in there. Sometimes you gotta take it off and you gotta clean that glow and clean it all back up. And I tell you what, each and every one of us in our Christian walk tonight, sometimes we need to get back and go, I need to get my glow and my lamp, my quick trim back up and I need to get cleaned back up. Yep. Sometimes we gotta get in there and say, God, clean me back up. Don't let me be not what I need to be. Let me be what I need to be. I tell you what, tonight we need to get serious about getting everything cleaned up and thank God. You know, we're getting ready to go into a revival. And I tell you what, it wouldn't hurt tonight if each and every one of us didn't start saying, God, start preparing me. Start preparing me for this revival. Start getting what's in my life out of the way that may hinder this revival. I tell you what, one person in this church can be a hindrance to the revival. Yeah. And also, when there's a great flood, that one great flood is started by what? One drop of rain. One drop of rain. You could be that one drop of rain in this church tonight. If you get your lamp all trimmed up and you get where you need to be with God, I'm not saying you're falling away from God, but there's things in each and every one of us in this life. There may be, our week may need just a little bit of trimming. Need a little bit of cleaning up. Sometimes we need to go back down there to the altar and say, God, help me get my life cleaned up. Help convict me to get my life where it needs to be. And I tell you on top of that, each and every one of us needs to go down to the altar and say, God, let me be that first drop of rain. Let me be that first drop of rain in the flood. You know, when it rains for 40 days and 40 nights, it started with one drop of rain. Just one drop. Tonight, you could be that one drop. You know, Brother Charlie got to see somebody get saved up at the nursing home today. That's one drop of rain. And every time we start seeing more and more people and get saved, it's a drop of rain. It's a drop of rain. And I tell you what, tonight I would like to see some latter rain. I would like to see some latter rain in our revival. I'd like to see a movement of God like we ain't seen before. We've seen a great move of God in the last year in this church. But I'm here to tell you we can see even greater. But it's going to take people getting everything trimmed up, cleaned up, and get ready for a revival. I tell you what, sometimes we need to say be already revived and the revival gets here. That way, we can see souls saved. Man. We can see things, hearts, lives, and lives change. We can see marriages restored. Yep. <coughs> and I tell you what, tonight, we've got to get everything cleaned up, trimmed up, and ready to go. Because it's a midnight hour. You ever notice in the Bible, when it talks about things like that, when we talked about the virgin, it was at the midnight hour. Yep. when old Paul and Silas was in there in the prison and it looked like all hope was gone it, just, it was the midnight hour when they started to pray and sing and lift Jesus up I tell you what tonight we're at the midnight hour in this whole world we're at the darkest point in, this, in our world's history right now I believe we're are at the sickest perverted time in, in this whole world we're at the midnight hour. The bridegroom coming. Are you trimmed up and ready for him to be here? Yeah. I'll tell you what tonight, we need to make sure we're trimmed up and ready because here at the midnight hour, and it's at the midnight hour, it's always darkest before the dawn. I'll tell you what, I've been out there in the old wood before daylight, an hour or so before dawn when there ain't no moon. You can't see nothing. Yeah. It's dark. But I tell you what, when that sun comes up in the east, it gets bright. Man. 
And I tell you what, one day the sun's gonna come up in the east, and it's gonna be S O N, not S U N. And I tell you what, when the S O N rises in the east, and he starts to call us all home, it's gonna be too late for a lot of people. That's why we gotta be a light to this old world. We gotta get serious and get our lamp, lamps trimmed up and be ready. We gotta be studied up and ready to talk to people, and ready to witness to people. And tonight, we need just need to be ready and get everything ready tonight. If we could have a song of invitation, I think that's what God gave me for tonight. But tonight, if your lamb needs a little bit of trimming, or you just need to get down to God and say, God, I could use a little help to be cleaned up. Or Lord, help me be the light I need to be to somebody. It wouldn't hurt to come down to an old altar tonight and say, God, help me. God, help me be what I need to be. And God, help me be the person I need to be to help this revival kick off. Lord, let me be the first drop of rain tonight. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine own Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white. More than he Thank you. 